All right, so in the last video, we made a way to sign up, but there's a slight problem here. I can see the password in the database, and that's a major security risk. Like if someone somehow got access to the database, they'd steal everyone's password. So the first thing we're going to do right away is make a way to encrypt the password when it comes in. So, ooh. So what we got to do is install this thing that lets us encrypt passwords, and it's called bcrypt. Um, I mean, you could just Google like and and node in, encrypt passwords, but I already know uh, bcrypt from experience, so it's actually bcrypt.js, and uh, just like the other stuff, you do npm install bcrypt, and it'll it'll give you a way to to what's called hash a password, which is like encrypted, and then you can compare when someone logs in, you can just make sure uh, the hash. Um, is valid. You can like hash the new the attempt to log in and see if it matches the hash. Um, so let's do that. So let's bcrypt.js. Um, let's go to our server. Uh, I'm gonna control C it. npm install bcrypt.js. Save. And that should do it. Done. Very simple. And let's include it up here. I'm just going to copy this guy and then paste it here. Bcrypt. Be very careful when you uh, copy and paste. Oops, sorry, it's bcrypt.js actually. I'm just going to call it bcrypt in the variable. So once you have that, um, when you make a user, instead of just straight up inserting it, I'm going to hash the password first. So I'm going to say. Um, var new user equals object and inside the object I'm going to say username is the rec.body.username but the password is going to be it's going to be something that I that I generate and it, by generate I mean hash so let's do that um, let me just google how to do it actually because I don't even know well it's in this page here so um, so the first thing you do is is generate a salt uh, you could do it uh, synchronously or asynchronously synchronous means it does one line at a time but it, it's a little bit slower but since this is a web server we want it to be nice and fast so you should do everything asynchronously which means you have to use promises and callbacks um, it's the proper way to do it so you can do bcrypt gen salt that generates what's called a salt, and then you can do bcrypt.hash, which uses that salt. Um, the reason you use the salt is so that um, every time you hash a password, it doesn't come out with the same hash every time. But even if you do that, you can still compare it and it still works out. So this is just the modern uh, industry convention for hashing stuff. So let's do that right here. Um, so after we get our users collection, but before we insert the new user, let's boom, bcrypt.gensalt, um, get a salt, um, then bcrypt.hash. And instead of this thing, I'm going to do rec.body.password. So we're going to pass the password into this hash function. And then what comes out is the hash. And that's what's going to be the password. So I'm going to cut this, put it in here, and then indent so this hash is what's going to be the password so let me put that right here let me just confirm that um, yeah store the hash in your password database okay so that should work so let's see if that works um, let's refresh our let me just open up the server let me start the server and let's sign up again no I don't want to save it uh, I'll call it Dave2, password Dave2, sign up, success. All right, now let's check the database. Let's do db.users.find. Oh, something is not right. db.password. Should not have done that. Let's just do some debugging now. Um, Rec.by.password. Let's do console.log. Um, hash. Let me just do some debugging. A good way to do that on the server is to uh, just log some stuff just to make sure everything's working okay. Um, save. So now I'm going to 
Let's try this one more time. Sign up. Okay, so here's the salt and here's the password. So it worked okay. I'm surprised it's still not saving it correctly. New oh, I know why. It's because uh, I'm still using rec.body on the insert. I should really be using my new thing that I just made here. So that was the problem. So let me get rid of these. All right, let's try it one more time. Um, I'll call it Dave3. Sign up. Um, something's not right. It should have said success. So let's restart the server. Node mon server. Refresh. Let's call it day four this time just to success. Okay. And let's take a look. db.users.find. Okay. Now this is the proper result. So username day four. Password is this long gobbledygook that you can't see. So even if you hack our database, um, you won't be able to steal everyone's passwords that they probably reuse over and over again. Um, so that's the first step. So what we're going to do in this video, in addition to encrypting our passwords, is make a login form. Um, oops. So to get back to the login form, so I'm on the sign up page right now. How do I get to the login form? I'm going to make this a link, this mittens title a link. So um, what I'm going to do is on index.html. I'm going to surround this h1 or put the link in here a href equals pound remember pound slash uh pound slash just pound slash because that's going to be our home and then uh, and a okay so let's try that refresh mittens okay we're at the home page remember sign up page home page this is using our angular router that we hooked up in the last video just to recap when you're on the slash page it's the home page when you're on the slash sign up it's the sign up page remember we configured this uh, this configuration for routes so let's take let's go back to the home controller and make a way for us to log in in fact we forgot a button actually let's add a button for logging in um, where did that go let's add some more brs here Let's put a button, button, um, uh, type equals button. That's what I've been doing. And then open button. And let's just say sign in. Save it. Let's see how that looks. Good. Sign in button doesn't do anything yet. Um, remember, we got to add our ng models to our text boxes. ng model equals username ng model equals password ng model equals password okay and for the button we're going to do ng click equals sign in sign in okay and save that um, so now what do we do we have to actually make this function for signing in and we do that in our controller so let's go back to our controller over here and we'll do oops scope dot sign in equals function there's no arguments you just call it and we're gonna do um, a new um, a new route so it's gonna be remember when we did sign up it was like HTTP dot post users we're gonna do um, HTTP uh, let's say put um, there's so many ways you could do this you could do put get for sign in put uh, users sign in and then uh, the the body that we're gonna send is gonna be um, username and then password and what is the username and password well remember those ng models that we made so it's gonna be scope dot username recap that in a second scope dot password password and then we have our dot then function and that's a function and let's see what happens when we sign in in fact let's do an alert um, success successfully 
signed in. I'm not sure if I spelled successfully right, but we will know. I will probably hear about it from you guys. So, um, so again, HTTP.put, the route, and then the payload, which is the username and password. What is the username and password? Remember those ng models we, we made over here? <clears throat> username, password, that's how we hook it up. Username, password, ng model, and then our controller can then take those and send it to the server. So let's make our route on the server, users.signin. Um, I'm gonna copy this whole thing because it seems to have some similar code. I do that a lot. I just copy something that's got something remotely similar to what I'm about to do. I'm going to http.put or app.put. That's going to be slash users login. And then uh, I get the users collection. Now, instead of generating a salt of the password and inserting it, I'm going to do what's called a compare using bcrypt. So I'm going to compare what's given to bcrypt. Uh, sorry, I'm going to compare the password that you gave the server to what's in the database. I have to use bcrypt because remember our database hash the password. If I compare my real password to this hash, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna work. I have to use bcrypt to do it. So there's an example on that bcrypt, that same page. It says to check a password, you do bcrypt.compare. The first argument is the password. The second argument is the hash of the password, which is in our database. And then it'll give a callback function where res is either true or false, depending if it checks out. So um, so before we do this test, actually, I want to do, um, remember how we did dot then if it, they successfully sign in the second argument to dot then we don't really talk about this that much, but there's another argument called, um, it's another callback function and it lets you handle if there's an error. So if I don't successfully uh, log in, I'm going to do alert, um, bad login credentials. So this is how we're going to test it actually. Um, so if I sign in and it works, I'll see this alert. If I sign in, it doesn't work, you'll see this alert. So let's make the route that's gonna do the do the magic. So first thing we do is get the users collection. We, um, we're gonna wanna do a find on the users. So where's that db.find? Um, yeah, I'm gonna copy this. I always copy, 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 paste. Uh, so after we get the users collection, let's find the user that we need using their username. Um, find username. Um, oh, actually, I should use find one. There's going to be just one user that we need, and it's rec.body.username. Um, I don't think I need to do two array. I think I just could do comma. I think this is the this is the syntax for find one. It's different from find because find you need to do dot two array, but for find one, you're just going to get back one document, so you don't need an array. So this is just going to be uh, user or whatever you want to name it um, so once you get the user back um, now we're gonna do the bcrypt compare bcrypt dot compare the first argument is what's the the attempt is so the attempt is rec dot body dot password this is what you typed in on the front end and then the hash is gonna be user dot password and that's not the real password that's the hash remember what's in the database and um, the third argument is the function the callback so it's either error and then res or result I don't want to say res because I use res up here I can overwrite it there's nothing wrong with that it's just I don't I'd rather not it's kind of confusing um, and so if um, result oh sorry result um, do this and else do something else. And I'm about to show you the difference. Let me just delete all this. Um, so if the result is true, that means they successfully logged in. So I could do return res.send. Um, and if they didn't do it successfully, I could do return res.send. Uh, how do you send an error? So you have to send an error code back. So let me Google how to do that real quick. Express JS send error. Um, oh, it's res.status. That's what it was. Okay. So you do res.status. I usually do 400 for problems. I think 403 means unauthorized or something. I'll just do 400 for now. 
Angular will automatically call this function if you send back a 400 or 500 error. If you send back 200 to 300, I think it'll call this function. That's just the, how this thing works. Um, so to recap, we have a route for logging in. The first thing we do is get the users. Second thing we do is find a user by the username. Let's just assume for now that the username is correct. And then lastly, um, we compare the password attempt with the hash that's in the database. And then we take the result of that. If it's successful, then we say, we send back our normal 200 response. If it's not successful, we send back a 400. And on the front end, we, we do something for either one of those, which is just an alert. So let's try it out. Um, so we have our server, let me refresh it. Um, Dave for, I think my password was Dave123. Bad login credentials. Okay, let's try the correct password, Dave4. Nope, that was not right either. I think it was Dave2. Nope, I don't even remember what my login was. And no, okay, let's just make a new one. Dave5, Dave5. Sign up, success. Mittens, Dave5, Dave5. Sign up, sign in, I mean. Bad login credentials, really? Let me just, let me just log this to the database. I mean, log this to the server. Let me do console.log rec.body. Um, I don't know why this is not working. Let's try sign in. Users log in. Oh, sorry, I had the long. <laughs> it should be login. Actually, let me call it sign in. Sign in. If you if you have the wrong route, I mean the server just returned back a 404 essentially because it couldn't find that route. It's re I'm going to call it sign in. Um, let's see if that works. Um, so what was happening there was I was getting a, a 404 not found because that route didn't exist. I, I mistyped it in the controller on the front end. So let's try this. Dave, five, and then like ASDF, the wrong password. Bad login credentials. Okay, that came back 400. So that means it's finding the, uh, it's finding the route. Let's try Dave five. And there we go. Successfully signed in. So that's how you sign in. And so um, we've got to do more than this though. This is not enough because once you sign in, we need a way to keep track of you. Um, so this is where it gets interesting. Um, we need a way for the browser to remember that you're signed in. And the way we do this in a mean stack environment is with a, a token. You're going to save the token in the browser. And it's kind of like it's establishing that you're signed in all the time. So if you refresh the browser, you're still logged in. Um, let's get to that later, though. Let me first just create the token and save it in a variable. So how do you do tokens in mean stack? So it's it's this it's. Um, I think it's called JWT, J JSON Web Token. It's called um, NPM JWT. I think it's NPM. Equals equals JWT simple. Okay, yeah, this is the library. Um, so there's a payload and there's like a secret. Um, okay, so on your server side, you'll you'll establish a secret key that will allow you to encrypt. A payload and what we're going to do is encrypt your user object into a payload and save it on the browser so when you refresh your browser every time you try to make a tweet or whatever while you're logged in the server will check it just to make sure that um uh that that you're the person who's making that tweet so let's save this for another video this is going to get a little complicated so let me just save this for another one and uh yeah we'll get into it all right, stick with it. 